doing? Happy Friday. Today is live stream number 63 and it is September 22nd, 2017. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join today's live stream. Today's topic is setup of lathe turning and a mill turn. So um, I hope that you will find this uh, interesting. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to, uh, to join today's live stream. Now, before we jump into anything, I got to say, I'm a mill guy, like by heart. So if any of you other guys out there who are kind of like into milling uh, and then thrown into doing some turning on a lathe or mill turn, I think today's live stream, uh, I think you're going to walk away with some, some good tips. So that should be useful. Don't forget, down in the description area is my email address. Any future topics, love to uh, hear, uh, hear about them. Also, now we are talking CAM. That's our new thing. On Fridays, we are going to, uh, to talk CAM uh, here on the live stream. The CNC Handbook. If you have not grabbed your free copy of the CNC Handbook, you need to grab it. Um, you put in your email address, you're not going to get any spam uh, of any kind, I promise. And, um, and then you will get your free CNC handbook. Okay, so we already got 23 people here. We've been on for, uh, for just a minute. And for you guys who's watching the recording also, thank you, everybody. Thank you for taking the time. So, Friday. We made it. So this week was busy. Monday, we talked about curves. Uh, and remember that with like G0, G1, G2, we got all like crazy with that. We talked Tuesday about uh, the learning sites that is out there, the new uh, learning site with, um, with Fusion 360 and with Titans Academy. Awesome stuff. Uh, we talked about intro to simulation on Wednesday. So we actually got in there and we applied some meshes and we put some stress on it. And then uh, yesterday we modeled up a uh, computer fan. So we did some lofting, we used some, some parameter soap. Been a busy week. Today we're going to talk about mill turn. We're going to talk about turning, and then we're going to talk about some mill turns. So let me just switch over to, uh, to our screen here. And this is kind of like the part we are going to uh, be working about, uh, working with today. Now, I got to do a little bit of confession here uh, before we get into all this. So I'm a milling guy by heart. And actually, the first time I had to use a, a CNC lathe, I used manual lathe. The first time I used a CNC lathe, it was not just on a lathe part. It was actually on a mill turn part. So there was portions that was going to be turned down, and then there was portions that was going to be milled. And, um, you know, I like to say that I'm not afraid of anything, but I was a little bit out of my comfort zone there. But um, they had a great guy... Uh, who reminded me that when it comes to manufacturing, one of the f best things you can ever do is break things down into chunks. And I want to show you a tip that I have used ever since then when it comes to many times using uh, turning a mill turn. So uh, I'm going to show you two case scenarios here. And I, even if you're using, I think you can use this even if you're not even ever using CAM. Um, if you're looking at this model here, you will see that if you look down this, the history tree here, that I modeled this one up myself. Um, so if you look down here at this, you will see that there's a copy paste bodies down here. And what I did was I actually modeled this part all the way up till this stage, um, because that is the turning portion of this part. Now, after this part after this section is over this is all turning inside of the machine then it is going to be a milling part like this it's going to have some flats on it and some holes and things like that so what i did was i literally just um programmed you know so this is just let's go ahead and look at this this is just a revolve sketch i just sketched all this up and i revolved around the center axis here and uh, that kind of gave us uh, this body. And then all I did was I went up here and I did a control C, control V, what gives me the move copy command. And then I just renamed that second one to milling. And then I turned the first one off and did the rest of the program on the second one. So I actually kind of like have two, whoops, let me delete it. 
I actually have um, two bodies right now sitting on top of one another. So one is, uh, you can see here, one is turning, and then the milling is just a copy of the turning with the additional features down here. So not only in my mind can I break it up to the two different tasks. The first task would just give me this round part. And then in the second task, I can actually go in and I can do uh, the milling. But I can actually also do that inside of the camp. Now, I'm pretty lucky here, right, that I got to, uh, to model everything up from scratch. So I could think like that. So I literally just thought of the, the modeling sequence in first turning. And then I, I copied, and then I continued on with the milling. But I wanted to show an example where if you don't have that opportunity, many many people, including like how it used to be for me, I would get an imported model. So this is just one body uh, that is imported. Well, don't forget that inside of Fusion, there's some really, really powerful uh, things in here. If I go in and I copy this one, so again, just highlight the body, Control C, Control V, I get, um, I get a copy body and I could move it around, but I'm just gonna throw it right on top of one another. Now, if I hide the this one I just copied, look at this, if I go down and I click on this face and I hit the delete key on my keyboard, that flat goes away. Um, what happens is, and I'm gonna go around here and select all the holes, control select all these holes here. What happens is that Fusion, um, if I, delete these faces, Fusion will look at all the surrounding, the face, surrounding faces and it will try to patch it up. Um, and this is, um, you know, that's kind of powerful stuff. So if I go around here and I now hit delete, see all the holes are gone? Um, so it's not depending on how complicated the shape is that you are deleting, it's more about the surrounding, if the software can figure out um, what to do if you deleted those faces. So just like that, I now have, this is back to where I was when I modeled it up. And if I flip it around, you will now see that I have the, created the same thing with an imported model as I did with, uh, with the turning model. Is that cool? All right, so let me show you, <laughs> I hope it is cool. So let me show you uh, some turning tips, lathe tips. Now, the development team uh, at uh, Autodesk have done a lot on turning in Fusion uh, and in HSM. So also if you're running Inventor HSM or if you're running HSM works, um, have done some, some, some neat things in there that you definitely need to, to be aware of. So let's go into and, and look at a little bit of that. So I'm gonna flip this over to my turning uh, module here, and that's what I'm gonna be programming on first. So do all the turning first, then the milling in the end. So I'm gonna switch over to the cam environment. And the first thing you always gotta do is doing a setup, right? Now it comes in and does it as a milling by default. That is fine because all we have to do is click the milling sequence here and then go down and select turn and mill turn because that's the what we're gonna run on. And I kind of did this on purpose. I, I modeled this one up on a wrong plane because that's always happens to me when I receive models. So you can see that nothing is really correct here. Well, all it's looking for is to place this uh, free gnome in the right place. And the easiest thing is to literally just select a, a circular edge on your model and it will automatically uh, jump over there. Now, um, this is going to be a mill turn part, right? It's gonna have flats on it and, and different sections. So you definitely wanna make sure that you turn on the spun profile. Uh, when you do that, then the software kind of like slices through the model and makes sure that it picks up uh, all the different uh, sections on it. Now, another thing I want to show you, I'm going to go over to stock here, click on stock, and uh, by default, it shows up with fixed size cylinder, um, but it's actually fine because you should always measure your stock, um, and then it kind of like round it up, but it's fine too. Now, one of the things I like to do, I'm going to go over here, what is going to be the top view, you see how it's kind of like placed the stock in the center um, of the of the part in the center of the stock. Um, I'm normally like to use the offset from front. What just means that I can add like fifty thousands in here. So now you know we could actually make the length longer. 
but we will maintain that 50,000 just to clean it up or 25,000 so whatever kind of like your your section is all right um so that is kind of like your stock setup uh for this now first thing i'm going to go in and do is so the turning tool path all over here um first thing i'm going to go and do is just the exact same thing as you would do if you were milling and that is i'm just going to face off the top right take that kind of fifty thousands off and the menus in here does all the same things as they do inside of milling if this is the first time you see the turning um so i'm just going to go in and select a tool and for this exercise here i'm literally just going to scroll down and use the turning sample tools that you also have in uh, in your um on your fusion and uh, i am just going to select um a pretty standard um tool here lathe bit to just take that off and i'm not even going to place play with the other settings i'm just going to hit okay and um if we go in and simulate that i have my stock turned on so let's see here uh we will see that we're just taking off that fifty thousands. pretty straightforward uh, now what i want to show you comes to the next tool path so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to turn the stock off for a second the next thing i'm going to do after this is i'm going to go in and do kind of the profile of uh, of the part i'm going to show you a couple of things in here that you need to be aware of uh, so let's go up and hit the turning profile up here and uh, again i can actually use the exact same tool for this just to kind of like rough uh the profile down now just like when we were talking about um last week when we were talking about mixing 2d and 3d tool paths um i many times just like to hit okay and see what i get right like don't go in and change a million different settings just click okay see what the software gives you and then let's go in and make uh, some changes so that's what we're going to do here now the first thing is I'm actually going to answer a question that Richard emailed me about yesterday, and I haven't had a chance to get back to him. I don't know if Richard is uh, is in the live stream uh, on this Friday. Uh, but the first question we got here was, um, you see how the tool is kind of like roughing out? The, the, the software is smart enough to know the clearances here on the back of the tool, so it actually digs down and kind of like cuts uh, back here, and it also does that down here. Um, and it, it's kind of neat that it can do that, but uh, Richard's question was, I don't want that. <laughs> How do I get rid of that? And of course you can control that. So let's go back into the profile tool path, right click edit, just like anything else. And that actually lives right on the tool tab uh, in here. If you go down, you will see that down here, that is something called allow radial and actual grooving. And by the way, Mike Matara, who does all these pop-up menus, did a fabulous job uh, describing this. So you can actually control it in both directions. Um, now, I'm gonna click on don't allow grooving. And for here, let me just hit okay. And you will now see that it goes straight across, just like I kind of wanted it to, like Richard wanted it to. Uh, so that is right underneath the first, like right underneath the tool. Will you allow the tool grooving or not grooving? Okay, the next thing when I'm looking at this part is um, that you see how it finishes up right at the end of the part. Well, I actually wanted to go a little bit past this um, because I'm probably going to come in with a, with a parting tool at some point. Here's something new uh, that was just re recently done uh, inside uh, of the software. That is the next tab. And it's, well, it's called containment. It's not new but it kind of like got a cool facelift. Um, and this was actually um, one of the users, uh, I think it was Lonnie, now I might be stretching here, I, I give Lonnie credit. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Lonnie who came up with the suggestion that these containment areas work just like they do for, uh, for milling heights. So what you can actually do, you can actually grab these and you can actually just move them back uh, you can see how the number moves back here. I can actually move that containment area wherever I kind of like want to keep it. So let me just go minus maybe 375 or something. Hit enter. 
and let's go back and look at the sign, you'll now see that I kind of like extended it back. That is uh, extremely sweet. Uh, the next thing I want to show you also when we're in here in the roughing tool path, I'm going to give you a bunch of tips for this. Um, and that is, notice this. See how it's machining the front of the face? I'm like, well, wait a minute. Um, didn't we just do, wasn't the first facing operation where we cleaned all that off? Isn't that annoying? I don't want to go down that. I've already been down that. <laughs> it's no big issue. Right click, hit edit. And again, on the second tab where we had, where we just played around with the stock containment, rest machining, right? If we click that, it looks at the previous operation, hit OK, and now you will see that that have been uh, eliminated. I have a feeling that a couple of people have been playing with the lathe tool recently. Right now, like, uh... The last thing I want to show you inside of this operation, um, because I got a lot more to cover in here. Um, is there is a dragging option. So, or a non-dragging option, as I say. So when you many times are roughing out with a short tip tool like this, you really just want the tool to go in and get the heck out of the way again. You don't want it to go in and let it travel up this flat face in here. Um, you just want it to come in, get the heck out of the way, come in, get the heck out of the way. Um, if you go in again to that operation, you will see that on the passes tab, there's an option called no dragging. So if you check that one and we click OK, you will see that now we get a lot of more rapid moves. We don't have any blue going up here. So now the cutter will come in, get the heck out of the way, come in, get the heck out of the way. So I hope that, um, that this is kind of useful if you are gonna dabble into uh, to this turning thing. All right, so if we go up and click on our setup now and we hit the simulation button um, and we turn the stock back on, I like that. Uh, we should see here the facing operation and then we will kind of see that it's gonna go through here. You play with the feet and speed to step over um, and it will um, kind of rough all this down uh, as we would expect. Now, the other thing I want to show you, too, that I think is, is, is nice is so I just did roughed all this down. Now I want to finish it. Um, I think that the, the, the normal descent is like, OK, let me go up and grab another profile cut up here. Um, but I actually like to go in and click on this profile that I just had, the roughing one, control C, click on my setup, control V, and just copy that same operation because in that operation, I've already made some changes and I can carry those over like the extension here. And I also know what I have turned on that I maybe now want to turn off. So I can just go into this copy, change it to another uh, kind of like a finishing um, tool path. Go back again. I'm just going to select again from the turning tutorial in here um, and I can select a finishing operation. Um, and we know we, with the grooving is not an issue because we took care of that. We know we got the extension that we want. We know that the rest machining is turned on. So really all I have to do when I go in here is saying maybe I don't want any dragging. I don't want any roughing passes um, and, uh, and go in and uh, kind of like create uh, that um, cleanup pass uh, that we want in here. Well, actually, I probably want the... Um, I think I want the rest machining on. I actually want it to go in and clean up here because then it's kind of cleaning up all the these two depth relationships with that tool. So I will actually let it go in and kind of like clean that up. All right, moving on. I don't want to be too uh, long today. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was with these groovings in here. Um, so with these groovings, um, you have grooving operations in here too. And this is definitely also, again, where using that containment can be extremely helpful. So if I go in here and select a grooving tool, and again, I'm going to do what I did before. I'm just going to hit OK and see what the software gets me. So now it literally goes in and grooves absolutely everything. But again, that containment area that I showed you before where we could move before I showed you how we could just kind of like drag on these 
these planes well be aware of there is a bunch of options in here one of them being and again mike's uh pop-up menus here are absolutely a blessing um i use them all the time um you can hit selection i can actually also of course go in and select right on uh the geometry that i want to have that uh containment area within and we can kind of like uh define it too one other thing i just want to point out if you are brand new it looks like that this is offset you see how this is going down over here it looks like it should be shifted over a little bit it just is how the the grooving tool is kind of like following on the right side almost like cutter comp when it when it cuts around there so don't let that um let that frighten you all right you know what i think i'm gonna because 20 minutes um you guys we got 55 people in here you guys have better things to do uh let's skip uh this, this cop i think this kind of covers turning uh pretty well you shouldn't like one of the things that i found using like i said before i was a, i'm a mill guy by heart but one of the things i found with the turning is it's actually not that hard um another thing i want to show with the grooving is so definitely don't shy away from trying it um also be aware of that you do have uh some um you can pack with the depth so if you got to go really really deep uh, you have options to pack uh, with that in here too. That actually also goes for uh, when you do a cutoff. Um, of course, we still have milling to do on this part, but um, if you're doing a parting operation uh, on this part here, select our tool like this. So we're just parting off. Be aware also uh, that you can pack with that. Um, that option is in there, uh, so that is, uh, is, is really, really nice. Okay, um, we're going to leave it with that. Let's get into, uh, let's get into some, some milling uh, and show you some, some mill turn. Now, like I said, my first part was a mill turn part, but just for me, it made it a little scary. Um, but if you break it down uh, like this, so if you just came into the live stream, maybe when the recordings over you to go back and see how I broke down the model into two sections. One was for turning. That's the one you just see. Now I'm going to turn it on for, uh, for the milling portion. So I'm literally just going to do what, uh, you would think I'm going to go up to my operation here and I'm going to go into the bodies folder and I'm going to flip the turning to the milling, uh, leaving this here as my turning setup. Right. And then I can just go in and create another setup for all my milling operations and you're gonna see some some cool things here so hit another setup i'm gonna do the exact same thing right like i just like to break it break it down into uh into easier chunks now one of the benefits i have now um is that when it comes to stock well i can actually go in and use that solid i'm i used uh, as the model before so if i go over and select that over here in the tree now, when we go in and simulate everything, we're going to see what we had already taken care of in the turning operation. If we had completely finished it, I kind of like skipped it a little bit here. Um, but now our stock is all going to be um, be that turning operation. So we kind of like, you know, helped ourselves a little bit. Now, if if you are a lathe guy and you if you if, if it's reversed, if you've never done any milling and and you're a lathe guy and suddenly you got to do some mill turn. Um, one of the things that should comfort you, I think, is that the milling tools you're going to be using for mill turn are all the same ones that is used for milling. So they are all, you know, kind of easy to, to work with. The trick is to know how to set up your work coordinate system. Now, normally when we do it in milling, we're doing it in the setup. When we're doing it in mill turn, or this is also called live tooling, we do it right inside of the operation. So, um... I kind of modeled this part up on purpose uh, with this angle of face on here because there's kind of two different types of um, mill turns or uh, live tooling machines. Um, there is the standard live tooling where the tool kind of like just can come right in, but then there's these, I call them fancy mill turn machines. They actually has a B axis that can kind of rotate. So I wanted to show you both those examples 
on this part how you would handle it. Let's start the fancy B axis uh, rotation. So if we just wanted to go in and face this off here, um, we will go and pick a standard uh, facing operation like you would have if it was a mill. And uh, I'm just going to go in here and select a end mill. Just and you can pull this right out of your uh, milling library. It doesn't really doesn't really matter. Um, now when it comes in, you will see that it, it automatically goes with the z-axis like if it was a vertical mill. But here's the trick. This is so simple. Um, if you go out to the geometry tab, you have something in here called tool orientation. And if I click on that, then I actually have the exact same work coordinate system setup as you are used to in the milling. So I literally just have to select this face and you will see that the that the triad kind of like flipped just like if we were uh, if we were selecting our work coordinate system on a mill. That's all you have to do. Now uh, you see this orange bar and if you're used to doing facing you know that this is kind of like all the stock. So I only want to face this off right here. So I'm actually just going to select uh, containment and select or selection and select that uh, area there. Now I also know that since this is a facing operation that I'm going to my height tab, um, the bottom height on the normal facing operation is set to the top of the stock, but it's a little bit off here. So I'm just going to change that to selection and I can select that uh, face here. So now it's going to go down to that and uh, let's just hit OK and see what we get. And we actually kind of get a nice uh, facing operation here. Now, you might want to rotate it so we can edit it. If you want to do that, go to the Passes tab. And uh, then we can just pass direction, change that to 90. And it goes the other way. Uh, so let's go in and simulate this. Now, you will see now that my stock, if I turn it on here, is that from the previous model so that kind of like makes it nice um hit play here and you will see that it's gonna face that off um but then when i when i did this i'm looking at it, i'm like that's that's good it faces it off it looks good the end result looks good but look at how much the first cut is really taking that's a lot of material um so you could step this down but then i thought well you know, there's another favorite tool path when it comes to removing a lot of material, and that is actually the adaptive clearing. So let me go in here and right click on our facing operation. Instead of deleting it, I'm just going to suppress it because I really don't know, you know, maybe I want to use it later. So when I suppress it, right click suppress, then uh, it goes away here. Um, let's go up and do this with a adaptive clearing. So let me stick the adaptive clearing. I'm going to leave the same, um, the same end mill that we used. I'm going to go back over to the geometry tab, again, use this, the tool orientation uh, and flip it up the same way. Now, again, we see we get this orange shadow for stock. So I'm going to go again and I'm going to kind of like contain it that I want to machine within this area. But adaptive clearing actually still looks at the whole stock model. So I can go down here to the bottom and I can override the stock by selecting model. I'm gonna this uncheck include setup model, and I'm literally just gonna select what I want the software here to uh, to kind of look at. What is um, these faces here? Let's go in and hit OK. Oh, and it looks like my depth is off. So let me go in and right click, hit it. That depth is probably going to model bottom. Yes, it does. I'm going to change to selection and right there, hit OK. And look at that tool path. So let's go in and, uh, and simulate that. Stuck back on there. And that is actually uh, kind of maybe a little bit of a, uh, a nicer tool path like that, I think. Um, so that is how you could do it with the B axis. If you do have the fancy B axis, rotate it. Um, definitely play around with the adaptive to help you out removing uh, a lot of material like that. Now, if you have a machine like I had, what has like live tooling on it, you cannot, you cannot bend, um, you cannot bend that whole 
axis down like that. You're going to have to kind of like go straight down. So there I would probably, let me just go in and um, suppress our adaptive here. Um, for that, you would probably use something like a parallel cut. Um, and really do the same thing as we just did. So go in here um, to our geometry tab, use the tool orientation. Now this time, still selecting this face because I can't go in the angle, I'm just gonna select a perpendicular face like that, flip my C axis. Um, I'm gonna kind of use the same thing as we did before. We're gonna kind of contain it. So uh, what's last Friday's um, um, live stream if you wanna get more into the, to the free access tool path. Uh, but like this here, we can actually go in and we can again kind of control uh, all this down to, uh, to the direction of the tool path. Again, I would probably rotate this 90 degrees. And I didn't do this with a ball end mill. I did it with a with a flat end. I'll probably rough it down in a few steps because this is going to be, uh, you know, a little. It's going to be a lot of material for that pour end mill to take. But that's the way you can rough it down. Come in with a ball end mill and kind of like uh, clean that up. So I hope that this was kind of helpful. The last thing I'm going to show you, just because you need to know about this if you're ever doing a mill turn, and that is, you see how we have all these flat faces here. You don't have to do this, uh, setting all this up on all of them. And, and many of you guys probably already know this, but if I go in and say I want to face off, I'm not going to put the hole in because we're just on the half an hour. But if I go in here and do a facing operation, again, I'm going to select my tool orientation and I can really, I just selected the plane, but I could also just select a face like this. doesn't really matter. I'm going to select the containing area, but it's going to be this face here, um, the depth is going to be that same face. Set that up, let's hit okay and see what we get. Yeah, again, I'll maybe go the other direction, doesn't really matter, um, but so you could do this, I know there's seven of these flat spots, but just so you know, there is also in CAM, if you right click and you go in and you say add to new pattern, and I've used this before, uh, you can do a circular pattern, and if we select a, an axis to rotate around, let's put in seven here, you will now see that we get uh, seven flats here. Now, I will say that when you simulate this, um, you will see that the tool is going to move around, but it, when you post it out with your code, it's actually going to, uh, the part's gonna be rotating, the, the tool's gonna be to be uh, stationary. I hope this was uh, I hope this was useful. Um, you know, if you're brand new to this whole uh, turning lathe, turning uh, mill turn, um, you know, it's really not that uh, that hard. Um, and I hope that today's tips, kind of like you know, you saw a couple of things. You know, ease into it. Don't just think that you have to program. Uh, the entire part and then just hit the green start button and run away. I am a very big fan of, you know, program a couple tool path, go out and run it, make sure it's all good, like maybe rough down the part and then come back in again and do kind of like your finishing tool path. You know, like bring it in, uh, bring the part in. Don't, you know, just, just hit the green button and run away. I hope this was useful. You let me know. My email address is down in... Um, in the description area. Fridays is our cam day, um, but we might throw a couple of cam in during the week too. Um, let me know what you think and what you would like to see. I think next Friday, I think we're gonna dive into adaptive clearing a little bit more. Maybe talk about how you best attack that um, because I've got some requests about that. Anything else you wanna see? This is trying to add a more value to your Fusion 360 experience. So uh, yeah, let me know. If you like this, thumbs up. If you don't, Thumbs down. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. That was Friday. That was this week. We are done, guys. Um, I will see you on Monday. I'm going to end the broadcast. So if you're watching the recording, hope you had a, have a great weekend. And I'm going to jump into the live stream and say hi to everybody. Take care, guys.